I'm on this job in Woodlawn, Tennessee today. This is what I'm looking at. This was a uh, prior or pasture. Uh, it was like grown up over 25 years or so. And so all of these trees are kind of a uniform growth. And so they're all, there's some small stuff, but everything is in the, you know, mostly in the probably four to eight or nine inch kind of diameter range. I've got about one and a half acres in here. The owner wants it to look like this when I'm finished. She wants me to leave the cedars and uh, any red buds and any uh, well-formed, healthy uh, hardwoods. So what I did for today, I normally run carbides. I've got a fecon. There's <clears throat> a bullhead uh, uh, 74. I normally run carbides on it, but for this job, I put on 10 Viking blade teeth. So this is going to be the first run of these. I've never run blade teeth before, but since I have such a dense growth of larger trees, I wanted to give the blade teeth a uh, try just to uh, see how they do production wise. But um, I've had these carbides on now for about 270 hours. They're still cutting fine. They're a little bit rounded on the tips, but they're still doing fine after 270 hours. But what I'm going to do with this video, so this is a brand new Viking. So I want to see how these blades wear. I'm going to run these for eight hours today and see how they look at the end of it. So this is a view of the sharpness and the wear. So, uh, let's get busy.
this uh, Fecon FGT head. Got 30 teeth. Normally run 30 carbides. got 10 Viking blades on it. What I'm going to try to do is um, any of the smaller trees, I'm going to get on the ends of my drum just to save the wear on the uh, blade teeth. But I'm going to use the blade teeth for these bigger diameter trees, like this one. Like this one, I'll just cut on the side to the drum on the carbides. No problem. A little bit bigger hardwood, I'll cut it on the blade teeth. And I just kind of ease. drum down on it. Try not to jam it down. effect is like a DCR drum with rings. 
depth control. So I want to make sure that I'm keeping the drum up to RPM and just lower the drum slower. teeth are taking a smaller bite out at each uh, revolution.
know, I'm not going to get crazy. That's like a 10 inch, uh, looks like a white oak or something. I'm not here to cut that stuff down. The owner said to leave some nice bigger trees. This is a follow up after seven and a half hours of running these Viking uh, blade teeth, all in hardwoods. Um, they look like they're holding up pretty good. Uh, so what they say is these are double edged. So you should get about uh, somewhere between 70 and 80 hours out of using both. So somewhere about 35 and 40 hours out of each side. Now that's with sharpening. So um, definitely don't need the sharpening yet. The edges on all of them still are nice. No nicks. And I was still getting really good uh, cutting action on them. So there's a view of them. Seven and a half hours. Still looking good. Still don't need to sharpen them. So we'll continue on and do another follow up. So the job is finished. This is the end result. This is where I originally started the video. Here's the shed area. It was 1.5 acres. It's all fenced in. It's got a great fence. It's got like the telephone pole treated uh, fence, poles, livestock fence with some stranded barbed wire along the top. So this turned out really good. Uh, 1.5 acres took uh, 14.8 acre, 14.8 hours uh, to do. Again, the trees were um, mostly 4 to 11 inches in diameter. It was very dense, but it was uniform across the whole area. Um, a lot of bigger wood than I would normally do. Um, that's why I used the the blade teeth on this job just to get through it a little quicker and did a great job this is a size mulch that's kind of left and I'm not just picking up the smaller stuff but I did go over most of this uh, as a final back drag and broke down all the larger pieces so from here uh, what I told the customer um, and she wanted these uh, pines left in larger, uh, well-formed, healthy trees. So all of these trees are looking great. It's currently uh, April 1st. And uh, so things will start growing back uh, sometime in May, June. There was a lot of wood here, so it left a good layer of mulch. Um, just looking around, I'll just dig into a spot. Maybe three or four inches to get down to the soil here. Uh, some parts might have been a little thicker, uh, but there was a lot of wood to cut, so which was fine because uh, this is a uh, little wetter soil around here it holds the soil it holds the water so um, this will be good when it uh, decays into the soil so what I <coughs> advised uh, the customer I mean this is spaced out enough tree wise that it can be bush hogged um, she said she would like me to come back uh, probably in September She's going to let this grow up over the summer, uh, get me back with the mulcher, and mow it all down again. And that'll be good because it'll be another uh, mulching of the soil and uh, getting all the new growth mulched back in with it. So that'll be good. The other thing I recommend it, since she does have a great livestock fence already here, is, you know, people like goats. A goat or two would... Uh, be in heaven back here and would probably keep this down uh, throughout the summer but uh, that's it 1.5 acres in 14.8 hours and um, customer was tickled 
you have any comments or any questions about the blade teeth, uh, leave it in the comment section and I'll be happy to have some back and forth with you. If you have any great ideas, let me know. Talk to you later. So I just finished the job. Obviously a muddy job. So again, I wanted to follow up on these uh, Viking teeth. It's the first time I've ever run blade type teeth. The reason I wanted to give them a try, I normally run carbides where I'm at here in uh, Middle Tennessee. Uh, because we have churdy type soil, lots of uh, small rocks. So I run carbides just for the durability. Um, and again, these carbides, I normally get, um, these currently have about 300 hours on them. They're starting to, tips of them are starting to wear. So I'll probably get another 50 hours or so on them. But um, again, I use them for durability here. Um, and the secondary thing is there's no maintenance on them. So once you install them, you're good to go for 300 to 400 hours. So I like that. So I'm not spending time and cost uh, maintaining these teeth. Blade teeth, I've always been a little skept skeptical of. Um, these are double-sided teeth or double-sided blades. So you get about 40 hours from what I've heard per tooth with some sharpening uh, before, between. One side wears out, flip it over, and you get another 40 hours or so. So with this job, the reason I wanted to go with uh, try out some blades is because I had about a little over an acre and a half of very uniform and dense uh, trees. And they were all hardwoods. Uh, the majority of the trees were four to ten inches and they were growing every three or four feet apart so there was just a lot of big wood to cut down and again my carbides have about 300 hours on them uh, normally that type of um, dense density of uh, trees and uh, the size of them using carbides that normally takes me about 11 hours per acre to do with the carbides. So I wanted to try the blades out to see if I can get a faster production. Well, it turns out I did. So I did uh, the acre and a half in 14 and a half hours. So that comes out to, you know, nine and a half hours. But in that, uh, there were some bunch of pushed over trees and everything that a dozer pushed over. So uh, that took some time to get a big clump of trees uh, mulched down. So I'd say nine hours per acre of that high density, bigger type uh, wood uh, with, the, with the blades, which was good compared to normally 11 I would do with the carbides for the same type uh, density and size wood. But I just wanted to show you what I was looking at. So, obviously it got a little rounded off after I, 14 and a half acres to do an acre and a half, but I did some other work on the property. Um, so this is actually 19 hours. Definitely needs, here's a comparison, just to show the difference in the sharpness. So it definitely needs to be sharpened. Put the gauge on it to show. So when I sharpen it, I've never used a gauge before because I never sharpened, but uh, let me see here. So just to get that angle, that's what I'm looking at as far as being rounded off. So I have to take a lot of this material off to uh, get it back down to this kind of edge. So again, 19 hours on that. Um, I don't know how long it's going to sharpen. I've never sharpened before. I've got 10 teeth on here. 
So I will do that and um, use the, continue to use these teeth until they're worn out. Um, so hopefully I get another, after a sharpening, hopefully I get another 20 hours, be, you know, while I still have on this, on this edge. And then I could flip them and get another uh, 40 hours on the other edge. So, but overall, I'd say, uh, you know, if you're looking for production, the teeth definitely uh, higher production. Uh, again, for me, just roughly uh, doing it in my head, um, nine hours per acre for what I was doing compared to the carbides, taking about 11 hours for that high density and size wood. But now I'm going to have to do some maintenance on it, so I'm going to see how long it takes to sharpen 10 teeth. And um, I'll have to add that in my math and sit down with a piece of paper and a calculator and uh, actually get the actual cost per hour to run these things. So again, these carbides, Vikings, these are $41 a piece. The carbides I run, which are uh, the double carbides uh, for Fecon, uh, are about $100. Some places you can get a little bit cheaper, but... Uh, Right around $100, and I normally get somewhere between 300 and 400 hours on them. So I'm going to have to sit down and do the math on that. But I like the production. It's definitely good. I just don't know if I'm going to like the maintenance uh, between jobs or during the between days. Some of the things that came with this, this is the sharpening gauge. And I'll show you kind of how that works. There is a flat edge on the tooth. Put it down, and that's the sharpening edge. Uh, here's a flapper sander wheel. It is from Fecon. I ordered this from Fecon. This is a 40 grit, it's a four and a half inch disc. Put on your angle grinder. And again, for uh, people that um, work with metal, these flappers are generally better, especially for sharpening an edge, because uh, they don't generate as much heat as using a stone grinder. And of course, when you build up a lot of heat on metal, on a sharp edge, uh, it kind of loses its structure. So the next time, if, it, if you really heat it up, you know, the metal molecularly is a little weaker. So the flapper wheels are definitely better. So this is kind of what comes with it from Fecon. The flapper wheel, 40 grit. Put it on your angle grinder um, in the gauge to sharpen it. Um, one thing, the last thing I want to talk about is when I talked to Fecon about this and how to set it up. And this is a B8, this is a Fecon. It's muddy now, just got off this muddy job. But anyway, um, this is a BH-74. Uh, the drum itself is 61 inches wide. It's got 30 teeth on it. So what uh, Fecon says to do when you're going to mix the blades with carbides is find the center point of the head Okay, 61 inches, so it was uh, 30 and a half inches. And I made a mark. And then I say to go 10 inches on each side of that mark. So you have a 20 inch gap here. And then spin your wheel and everything inside of that, um, uh, where you can put the blades. And what that comes out to on this was 10 teeth. So 20 inches of this drum is 10 teeth. So 10 on the outside, 10, 10 carbides on the outside, 10 carbides on that side, and 10 blade teeth in the center. And then we'll keep your balance. So that's it. Um, so would I normally run uh, blade teeth uh, for, you know, keep this mix on? I like this mix for this job. Um, the job that I was on, it was basically a grown-over pasture that had been grown up for about 25 years. 
So the soil on it was good soil. Uh, it wasn't rocky, wasn't churdy. So I did get a lot, I did get better production from these blades. But would I do it all the time? I'm not quite sure if I would uh, because most of my jobs, 90% 90, 90 of my jobs are rockier type soils. So I like the durability of the carbides and um, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to like doing uh, sanding. I'll see how easy these are to get the edges back, but I'm not sure I'm going to like taking an hour or an hour and a half or whatever it takes uh, to sharpen these things. And I have a, an angle grinder uh, to use the sanding wheel, but uh, it's in my shop and it has a power cord. So if I was going to continue to do this, I'd get a battery powered angle grinder. So that's uh, something to think of uh, cost wise. But uh, yeah, generally for this job, it was great. It did get better production. I did find myself cutting down. Uh, I normally limit myself, and I, this is what I advertise for my business, is six to eight inch trees, which in a typical kind of growth forest is 90% of what's growing there. Um, but for this job, since it was a denser, uniformly dense, grown up uh, area, and all the trees were basically four to 10, 11, 12 inch trees, um, I wanted to try these out and I did like them. Uh, now for me, I charge by the hour. I don't do contract work or anything like that where I have to hit uh, deadlines and production rates and stuff like that. So uh, that just works for me and my customers. So yeah, we'll see when I sit down and do the actual uh, final math on this. And I think I'm going to actually do the math when I completely wear both sides of these blades out uh, just to see how much actual life I actually get uh, when I'm working in my typical kind of work areas with the rockier soil. So that's it for now. I hope some of that was informative for you. And there's your Viking teeth. And um, we'll see you next time.